Well, I think the, I don't like chops. You know what I mean? I know a lot of a lot of people teach chop, 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 chop. I, I like to get there close to the touch. I want to get as, there as fast as I can and close to the touch with the with the stick hand. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 if you, um, you know, we grade everything. I mean, you can close out and get all the way to the touch. If you don't have a stick hand, that's still minus one. Again, because now a guy, even as you got all the way to the touch, he can still shoot the ball. And uh, my one of the terms that I love to use is on the rise is too late. With 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 with, with top notch shooters, if you if you're shooting, if he's already on the rise, and now you coming up, that ball's already gone. So I think if you come out with that stick hand, that would deter him from from actually shooting the basketball and pot in and put it down to where we got things built in to to handle that. Um, like the close out no middle, you know. I think that's I mean that's the if I could find a solution to to get that to the, all of our guys to be able to close out you know finding that happy medium of closing out no middle but when, without allowing that straight line drive a straight line drive kills you you're a no middle team try to keep the ball out of the middle uh, and you know come with our, our low man you know, drop and, and, and rotate around around that and, you know you know and then and I think a lot of, you know five out is something that we spend a lot of time on teams are going more to to five out where you got bigs on the perimeter and those rotations are differently. Now you don't have someone that's cracking back on a, a big that's, you know, around the basket. Now you got to, you got to drop to space and get ready to, to have some, um, you know, kind of some structure into your rotations, you know, to the perimeter. So we spend a lot of time on, on those things, making sure that uh, we can adjust, you know, game to game. To, you know, like in the pros, you you know, if you you drive in the slot, you know, it's it's death if you leave that strong side corner, you know, and help. You know, yeah, boom, one dribble, you you in the slot. I mean, I know a lot of pack line teams, but in college, I've shown, I've I've seen that they're not as effective as shooting the the, the ball in the corner. So we've, I used to be more kind of ninety ten, you know, as far as you know, you know, we we want to be more locked into the corner. 90 percent a little bit in the gap 10 percent i think i think now we can almost be 60 40 you know 60 40 of being in that gap and then if they hit it you know once you see that gather on the gather and now he's about to pass it to the corner i want that that, that foot planted so i can push off and get back there but we want to make it look crowded because again just the numbers say um that they're not making it at the clip Yeah, I think we try to we try to you know touch on all of those things. We try to teach all of those different coverages, whether you know pick and roll coverage in the middle. We want to you know we could you know really be up to the level and be aggressive and try to corral the ball handler. You know if it's a really good ball handler that we're you know that he's a threat to make plays. We want to get the ball out of his hand and make maybe a, a, the big man that set the screen, make him pass the ball to him and let him become a playmaker. Uh, or if it's a really good playmaker as a big. You know, we, we would cover and let that guard come downhill, you know, a little bit more. So I think being able to mix in those coverages a little bit, we want a war, um, you know, pin downs, uh, get a show out, you know, from our big, you know, if his guys happen to slip to the rim, our weak side guys, you know, rotate for him so he can feel comfortable getting out there and being aggressive and not letting shooters come off easy uh, as we can. The guy, you know, that pick the picker action. Now you got somebody, the guy that set the cross screen. Now he's coming off the top for a pick the picker. We like to have that weak side guy in a little bit to, you know, kind of deter him coming to the top and those type of things. So it's just, again, it's, it's all um, personnel driven. You know, if there's someone that we're, um, that's a you know, knockdown shooter on the weak side, then we got to be a little bit more cognizant of, of, of not shrinking as much off of him. So again, it's looking at um, the last three or four games of how they played a rhythm of, of, of what they're doing and, and, and coming up with a game plan of doing and having a backup to that. Like I so said, no matter what you think, um, you know, coming into a game, you know, something can happen. They start, you know, somebody gets hot and you have to make an adjustment and you got to be willing to do that. So we, we make sure that we have a, a coverage that we start in the game in and, and the backup coverage just in case that that doesn't work.